Telton has asked the question that you know websites like Coursera, Udemy, etc., offer tons of courses on machine learning and AI. That too at a very low price. Apart from the classroom aspect, what does this course have in addition to what they provide, right? So let's ask this question. You know, we we talked extensively before we launched the program together, saying that you know we want to have an experience for the learner, which is different than the MOOC experience. So uh, can you just maybe put that? You know, why did we uh, why did we even think? Why did you think that you know uh, what you get in a MOOC? Here, that interaction you talked about, all of that, right? With this 400 students that you have covered now, have they given you feedback as to what is really valuable to them? Why did they not? Do many of them have actually done Udemy in Udacity, from what I can tell? They've done all these courses and then come to this program. Yes, there are, there are at least at least maybe 20, 25 percent of the people have already done this. Oh, done another course. They've done Udemy or Udacity, some, and then some come, other course, yeah. and then come to this. Yes. So, what is the motivation for them? Because that will answer this question. See, it's just that's where we start the discussion. Say that look, that is not designed for them. Hmm. So if you have a video which is tailored to a certain audience, mm. that is not going to meet uh, your requirement mm. and uh, your uh, like a curiosities, right. your way of learning, mm. and the associated things that you get, mm. and possibly also sometimes the commitment that you can afford. So in a classroom, you are also like a locked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's like you know, it's like going to the gym with a trainer. To do fitness every day versus doing it at home on your exactly, own. Sir, exactly. Uh, uh, compliance is a problem. Yes. You know, if you do it on your own at home, first thing you do is sleep longer. <laughs> you have to get up and go to a gym and, and be there with others. It's a good, good analogy. Yeah. yeah. So I was also going to add to that uh, response of yours to say that uh, you know the additional value apart from the master class from someone like Professor Jawar, who's one of a kind, is that you get to work with like-minded people who are also trying to build the same skill. Yes. And whenever you work with like-minded people in a hackathon, for example, your skills will develop much faster. There's no question about it, right? Yes. You know, I think you are also part of a community. You're part of a community that's the, motivated. The that is graduating. Yeah. I see that okay, now they are talking about how do they continue to yeah. learn. Continue In fact, to I think some of them are teaming to form startups. Yes. So you never know what will come out of this, yes. well beyond the course itself. Yes. So the, beyond the classroom master lectures, there is hackathons where you can learn, work together, build interesting stuff which you can't do in a labs. The lab, tutored labs. I mean, tutored. somebody is there to help you solve a complex problem because, again, you know, the, uh, MOOCs have a very interesting data point which I want to share with all of you. So, studies have shown that MOOCs have low completion rates, which we all know, yes. but there's a reason for it. The reason for it is that every topic of this type starts off easy and the complexity builds rapidly. Yes. When you hit a complexity curve, that your learning curve becomes very steep, without somebody helping you, you tend to give up pretty often. So, which is why uh, the ability to overcome these points in time when the complexity is just changing on you, you need a peer group and you need a structured setting where you have a routine that you're following. You have to go back there and participate. The second point, interesting enough, and I want to answer this question, but it might sound like a funny answer, is that all these guys have concluded that two major reasons why people give up too soon in MOOCs. One is that there is nobody that is pushing you along like a peer or a trainer, instructor. Second is, if you don't pay some money, you give up even faster. Okay. So, so even Coursera has gone to a model where they're now charging upfront, which they never did before, because they realize that people build commitment towards something only under two conditions. When there is a structure and routine and a set of people they work with, discipline, and others they made an investment. Only then the compliance is high. So in a way, I think the MOOCs have struggled with completion for these reasons. That it's so I think the, the connecting back to your first yeah. observation. Yeah. That uh, gauging the learning speed yeah. and adjusting the content is very important. Yeah. This is something that possibly the online courses will struggle to do. Mm. Because you don't get the pulse from the job. Yeah, no feedback. Yeah. No feedback. Yeah. Yeah. So here you know, so for example, like you have lectures, say sometimes I go thinking that okay, this concept I can explain in 15 minutes. And I realize I took 45 minutes. Mm. So it, it is sometimes because maybe I'm not explaining well, mm. maybe concept is harder than what I thought, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> so this uh, possibly helps you to adjust the pace, uh, adjust the content. Speed up, slow speed. down. Yeah. Yeah. So this is very important in learning. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Great, great response. Yeah.